Uh, the, the role of the Chinook's uh, tandem rotor aircraft, a heavy lift aircraft, were instrumental to the uh, operation itself. But unfortunately, we lost three of them. We lost them on the Atlantic conveyor. And there was only one survivor, and that was Bravo November. And that was my Chinook. That was the one I looked after during the, com to, during the conflict. And <clears throat> we were right in the thick of the activity, and we were isolated in the fact that we didn't have a lot of supplies. The Atlantic conveyor was hit and the, the other three Chinooks were on that, and they sunk. Um, we, we were desperate, really, for tools, for fuel, for anything. Um, so my activity really was to support the aircraft with about two or three, about four technicians in total, and the air crew. And we were there to support the campaign and move all the goods forward to Stanley and capture Stanley as, as soon as possible. Um, how did you end up becoming a Chinook technician and can you recall the moment when you were told that you had to go over to serve your country? What was it like? It's interesting though, you're not really told, but you are told indirectly because you're part of a squadron. The squadron goes, you go. There's no discussion as such. But if you've got a valid reason to stay, you can stay if you want. Um, because the squadron was split in half. Half of them, well, just about half of them stayed behind and the rest of them, us, went forward. And even then, because we lost four Chinook aircraft, the people that were needed to support the one aircraft were then selected again to go forward onto San Carlos and uh, to deliver and support that aircraft. So I was picked from a cast of quite a few. So it's a mixed sort of blessing, really. It was really tough. It was cold. It was miserable, and at times it was quite depressing. Were you scared? Yes, yes, because we'd been shot at, and uh, I lived under a poncho, and it was freezing cold, and, and food was in limited supplies in the earliest stage of the war. Um, so uh, eventually we, our standards increased, and we lived in a garage, um, and then from there on things improved as we got established on the island and then obviously the, the Argentinians were being pushed back then things changed but in the meantime we were being attacked by aircraft as well. Did you expect it to be such a short conflict? We thought we were going to be there forever. We did, I didn't know. Nobody knew. We didn't even know we were going there so we, we thought it would finish uh, pretty short or it would go on for a long time. We weren't sure. We're confident in our troops. I mean, they're brilliant. You know, they're the best in the world, in my opinion. But uh, you never know. And it down, it's down to support as well. And it's down to logistics, as the Russians are finding out. You know, they're instrumental. And that, that was a lifeline, all those ships going down to the Falklands. If we'd lost that lifeline, we would have lost the war. Just tell us about some of the features about these Chinooks. What's ma what makes them so unique and special? Well, they're very special, and you've seen them on the rock as well. I mean, you've seen the activities around the rock. You've seen the radar stations up at the, uh, the top of the rock. I mean, it's incredible, the loads they carry, up to 12 tonnes. You know, the centre hook would take 28,000 pounds. It's an incredible machine. It's the fastest helicopter in the UK um, military. And it's just incredible. It's just a big, massive, great big truck that can deliver and fast, um, all, all types of things. Just tell us briefly about this uh, 40th anniversary commemoration of the Falklands conflict. How does it feel, particularly reliving those memories and possibly reconnecting with people like yourself who served uh, in the Falklands? Do you think there's a a very special bond between you. Yeah, definitely. If everyone's experienced that. I'm hoping tonight there may be somebody that's actually gone to the conflict as well, you know, Marines or paratroopers or whatever, and no heckling. <laughs> it would be, it'd be nice because there is a common bond. We've all went through it. I was probably on the same ship as them as well. So it would be very interesting to get some feedback as well, if they're here. I know there are a few people here but they don't really want to come forward for various reasons. I, mean, I was quite lucky, really, because I was in support. The guys that really went out on a limb were the paratroopers and the Marines, you know. Um, Difficult and times. 